The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they beat the challenge of the Yukon. One day in early winter, Sergeant Preston was traveling north along the Yukon Trail on his way to Dawson City. As he neared his destination, he sighted a boy trudging toward him from the direction of town. The boy was accompanied by a big Newfoundland dog, which carried a small bundle of supplies strapped to his back. Sergeant Preston halted his team and hailed the boy. Looking. Okay. How are you? Hello. Hello, son. Hi, buddy. Where are you heading? I'm on my way to visit a friend. He has a cabin south of here. I'm Sergeant Preston. My name's Davy Martin. Glad to know you, Davy. Where's your home? Well, I, I don't really have a home. At least not anymore. No relatives? Just my mother. She's in a charity hospital down in Seattle. How'd you get into the territory? Well, I worked my passage up to Skagway as cabin boy on a ship. And I worked as a dishwasher for a couple of months until I earned enough money to get over the pass and go on to Dawson. I suppose you wanted to get in on the gold rush. Oh, yes, sir. I thought if I could strike it rich, I could pay my mother's doctor bills and buy a home for us. But, well, when I got to Dawson, I found out I couldn't even get a miner's license until I'm 18. How old are you? 16. Now, what do you intend to do? Go back to the States? Oh, yes, sir. This friend I'm going to visit's a dog freighter. He said I could travel with him on his next trip down to Skagway. From there, I'm hoping I can work my way back to Seattle. Oh. Well, uh... You don't seem to have many supplies. Better let me give you a few things. Oh, no, no thanks, Sergeant. When I when I run short, I can work for my meals. No, don't argue, son. I'm just coming back from patrol, so I won't need the rest of these supplies. Overriding the boy's objection, Sergeant Preston took the rest of his own supplies and added them to the small bundle which the Newfoundland dog was carrying. Gosh, Sergeant, I, I don't know what to say. I... Well, then, don't say anything. It's a fine dog you have, Davy. Oh, yes, sir. I sure think so. Skipper and I are pals, aren't we, Skip, old boy? <laughs> sure we are, boy. Oh, but say, Sergeant, if I didn't have Skipper, I'd sure like to have that big lead dog of yours. What's his name? King. He and I are pals, too, aren't we, King? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I'd better be pushing on to town, Davy. Take care of yourself, son, and best of luck. Well, thanks, Sergeant. So long. Bye, Davy. Line the team, boy. <laughs> All right, from King, on your husky. <laughs> When Sergeant Preston arrived in Dawson, he drove to Mounted Police Headquarters and unhitched his team. Then he reported to Inspector Conrad. Sergeant Preston reporting back from patrol, sir. Well, hello there, Sergeant. It's good to see you and King again. Thank you, sir. Pull up a chair. Anything of importance happen while you're out on patrol? No, sir. Just the usual routine. I'll make out a written report as soon as I get back to my desk. Very well. I'm glad to have you back at this time, Sergeant. Oh? Do you have another assignment for me, sir? Yes, and I think it's the kind of assignment that you can handle better than anyone else. What is it, sir? Well, since you've been gone, a number of robberies have occurred on the Yukon Trail. Any particular place? Well, they've happened at various points between here and the Stewart River. But apparently, they've all been the work of the same men. A gang? Three men, to be exact. Any descriptions? Practically nothing, Sergeant. They always wear bandanas, so none of the victims have seen their faces. However, the people who have been robbed all agree that the leader is a heavy-set fellow, apparently quite a bit older than the other two robbers, perhaps a man in his 60s. Well, that's not much to go on, sir. No, it isn't, but it's all we have. I'll get you the file on the case and spend the rest of the afternoon reading over the reports on the robbers. Tomorrow morning, we'll have another talk. Very well, sir. At that same moment, in a cabin on the Yukon Trail, three men were seated around a table. One was an elderly man, while the other two were considerably younger. But all were tough-looking, hard-bitten individuals. 
In one corner of the room, a tired-looking woman was peeling potatoes. Well, how about it, Paul? What's this job you got planned for tonight? Yeah, you said you were going to tell us about it. Land sakes alive. You aren't fixing to pull another robbery tonight, are you, Harry? What I'm planning to do is none of your business. Just tend to those spuds you're peeling. But it's your own good I'm thinking of, Ham. Yours and the boys. Why, it's hardly been a week since you pulled off that last robbery. Nobody's asking you what you think. Yeah, you better keep out of this, Ma. All right, all right, I won't say any more. But you mark my words, you better not keep on this way. Sooner or later, the mountains... You shut way. up! Now, getting back to business. Tonight, we're going to hold up Sullivan's Roadhouse. Sullivan's Roadhouse, huh? Yeah, that's four or five miles south of Dawson. That's right, Frank. Not such a big place, but they do plenty of business. They've got bunks for about 20 men. And on top of that, there's usually a bunch of sourdoughs hanging around the bar every night. We ought to be able to make a pretty good haul. <laughs> Yes, we'll do all right. Don't worry about that. Yeah, this ought to be a good night for it, too. Looks at that sky out there. There'll be snow coming down before dark. It'll cover our tracks. Yeah, it's just what I'm thinking. But we'll take extra precautions just in case. What do you mean? When we leave the roadhouse, we'll strike north. So if anyone takes after us, they'll think we're heading for Dawson. Well, what's the idea of that? If we want to get back here at the cabin, we'll have to head south. Shut up, and wait till I explain. We'll only head north for a mile or so. And we'll come to a branch trail I know about that cuts off to the east. Oh, yeah, I know that trail. When we get there, we'll turn off to the east and circle back here to the cabin. Oh, no, I savvy. That's a plenty smart idea, Paul. What time do you think we ought to get started? We'll hit the trail right after supper. That'll get us up to the roadhouse around 10 o'clock. Now, if everything goes right, we ought to be back here with the swag about 2 o'clock in the morning. Meanwhile, Davy and his dog, Skipper, continued steadily southward along the trail. As the day wore on, the sky grew more and more overcast. And by nightfall, it had begun to snow quite heavily. Davy left the trail and scrambled up to a sheltered spot among some big rocks on the hillside. He was too tired to gather wood for a fire, and so after feeding his dog, he contented himself with a cold supper. Golly, Skip, that snow's coming down harder than ever. That wind's awful strong, too. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if we ought to turn around and head back to that last cabin we passed. Gosh, it's a long way back. <laughs> hey, someone's coming along the trail. Let's take a look. Climbing out of his sheltered spot among the rocks, Davy peered down through the snow-filled darkness. Below him, he could make out three travelers with dog teams passing along the trail. There's three of them, Skip. Maybe he can tell us how far it is to the next cabin. Hey, down there! Wait a minute, I want to talk to you! But the north wind blew back the sound of Davy's voice, and he couldn't make himself heard above the barking of the huskies. A moment later, the three travelers had disappeared from view. Gosh, they didn't even hear me. <laughs> well, Skip, I suppose we may as well keep on the way we're going. We'll probably come to a cabin or a roadhouse soon. Come on, Skip. <laughs> the wind blew harder and harder, and before long, the snowfall began to take on the aspects of a blizzard. After pushing on through the darkness for some time, Davy finally came to a cabin and knocked on the door. Quiet, Skip, quiet. Oh, good evening, ma'am. Well, bless my stars. What are you doing out on the trail in this kind of weather, Sonny? I was on my way to visit a friend, but the trip's taken longer than I expected. The snowstorm makes it hard going. Mm, well, I reckon you'd better come in and warm up a bit. Oh, thank you. Would it be all right if my dog came in, too? Oh, I suppose so. Oh, thanks. Come on, Skip. Come on. You better take off your parker and muckler. Yes, ma'am. A few moments later, when Davy was seated by the fire, the woman said... I suppose you'd like me to fix your bite to eat. Oh, no thanks, ma'am. I stopped along the trail and had something to eat. But I, I would like to ask you a favor. Oh, what is it? Would you mind letting me stay here at your cabin overnight? I was afraid you were going to ask me that. Oh, I could just stretch out here by the stove. Oh, it ain't a question of where you'd sleep. We've got plenty of room as far as that goes. But three men live here, Sonny, and they don't like strangers. Matter of fact, you're lucky you didn't run into them. They just left here about an hour or so ago. I bet they're the ones that went by while I was eating supper. Were they heading north? Never you mind where they were heading. The point is they're coming back. If they were to find you here, believe me, there'd be trouble. But golly, Mammy, you know what the weather's like outside, a regular blizzard. I know that, Sonny, and I feel plumb sorry for you. Are there any other cabins near here? Well, no, not right close by. The nearest place I know of is about four or five miles from here. Gosh, uh, 
That's a long way to go. It's a mighty long way, especially in weather like this. Well, don't you suppose those men you were telling me about would, well, stretch a point and let me stay here seeing what it's like outside? Oh, Dad, rat it all. I don't know what to say. Like as not have a flamey alive, but... Oh, well, I just haven't got the heart to turn you out on a night like this. You, you mean you let me stay? Yeah, I reckon so. Oh, golly, thanks a lot. Oh, don't go thanking me just yet, young fella. The night's not over, and those men folk of mine aren't back yet. When they do get here, you may be sorry. You didn't clear out while you had the chance. Later that night, the three robbers arrived at Sullivan's Roadhouse. Well, here we are, Paul. It's the first move. First of all, we'll get our bandanas tied over our faces. Yeah, right, yeah. Huh? The windows of the roadhouse were aglow with light. Several sleds had been left standing in front of the building with their teams still in harness. And now what, Frank? You get your gun out and cover the door in case anyone comes outside. Okay, Paul. Bert, you and me will cut these huskies out of their traces. So no one can follow us when we make our getaway. Right. A short time later, the three men prepared to enter the roadhouse with drawn guns. All set? Yep, here I am. All right, let's go. Get your hands up, all of you. Holy smoke, it's a sticker. No, you don't. Anyone else hitching the stop lead? <laughs> good work, good work. All right, you sourdoughs, line up against that wall and toss your pokes on the floor. All right, boys, back to the wall. You After collecting all the guns and valuables and forcing the owner to open the safe so they could clear out the contents, the three crooks prepared to make their getaway. Frank was carrying the guns which they had taken from the customers in a big bag which the crooks had brought along for just that purpose. All right, boys, I reckon we've got everything. Let's mush. Uh, and don't anybody try stopping us. Stop it. I do with these guns, Pa. Heave them into the snow. Right. Now, uh, get that stuff on the sled, Bert. Then you get on. Hurry up now. That's it. Now, hush you, hush As the three crooks swung off down the trail, the doors of the roadhouse burst open, and the customers came pouring out. Luke Sullivan, the owner of the roadhouse, was in the lead. Now, there they go. They're heading for Dawson. They've cut loose all our huskies. Hey, look. There's a bag with all the guns in it. Come on, let's get them. At least we can take a few shots. Ah, uh, sure, there's no use, gents. They're out of range. What are we going to do, Luke? Hurry up and get some more harnesses, Joe, so we can get these teams hitched up again. Then we'll see if we can't trail them thieving skunks. Right. Well, what are you standing there for? As soon as their teams were harnessed, a group of men from the roadhouse started after the crooks. But they soon realized the pursuit was hopeless. After giving up the chase, Luke Sullivan sent his assistant, Joe Hurley, into Dawson to notify the Mounties. In response to the summons, Sergeant Preston and Constable Alex Ross arrived at the roadhouse, accompanied by a police surgeon, to attend to the man who had been shot during the holdup. Luke Sullivan spoke to the Mounties. I suppose Joe's told you all about the holdup, has he, Sergeant? He's given us the bare facts, Luke. He says the robbery was committed by three men. Yep, that's right. And if you ask me, it was them same three crooks that have been pulling off all the holdups along the Yukon Trail these last couple of months. What did they look like? Uh, sure, we got no look at their faces. They were wearing bandanas. Can't you give us any description of them? Well, they were wearing drill parkas, and they were big fellas, all three of them. What about the leader? Well, stop to think of it, he seemed a quite bit older than the other two. Almost an elderly gent, you might say. In that case, you're probably right, Luke. It corresponds to what we know about the three men who committed the other holdups. Yeah, me and some of the other boys took after him, but was no use whatsoever. By the time we got our teams hitched up, the snow had covered their trail. We couldn't tell the fresh tracks from the owls. They certainly picked a good night for a holdup. Uh, do you think there's any chance of King trailing them, Sergeant? I doubt it in a snowstorm, especially without a scent guide of some kind. What do you mean by a scent guide? Something the robbers have worn or handled. Say, I may have something at that. Huh? What? Uh, hold on a minute. I'll show you. Maybe this will be what you're needing. A sack. Where'd you get this? Well, when them three spalpeens held us up, they collected all the customers' guns in this sack. Then they dumped it outside in the snow when they made their getaway. I don't know, Luke. I suppose the customers all handled the sack when they recovered their guns. Uh, sure, and quite a few of them did, Sergeant. Would that spoil it? I'm afraid so. However, we'll see. Here, King. Here, boy. Get the scent, fella. <laughs> King sniffed the sack carefully. It bore the scent of a number of different human beings. And there was no way of knowing which one his master wanted him to follow. 
great dog was puzzled. How about it, boy? <laughs> what do you think, Sergeant? Doesn't look too promising, Luke. When King gets a definite scent, I can usually tell he acts eager to be on the trail. That's not the way he's acting now. Apparently he's confused. Fate didn't rout her luck, I suppose. Well, maybe, maybe not. We know that the scent of at least one of the robbers is on this sack. If King should pick up that scent later on, he'll remember it. King, my boy, if you can track down them robbers, I'll buy you the biggest steak he ever saw. <laughs> Joe Hurley said they headed north toward Dawson when they made their getaway. That they did, Constable. All right, Alex. We may as well hit the trail. All right, Sergeant. Here's wishing you luck. Thanks, Luke. Up front, King. Line the team. Line the team, Luke. All right, on King. On the Husky. Blizzard had somewhat abated by the time the three crooks arrived back at their cabin. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, 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 Give me that lantern you're carrying your sled, Pa. Now I'll unhitch the dogs. All right, wait till I get it for you. What? Last and all, I what's the matter? can't find the lantern. What, you got it? No, you were carrying it on your sled. I remember that for sure. It must have fallen off somewhere along the trail. Well, no matter. There's another lantern hanging in the woodshed. Go get that one. Yeah, all right. Come on, Bert. Help me carry the swag inside. Yes, sure. Is that you, Ben? What? What in tarnation are you doing up at this time of night, Elmer? I told you before not to sit up for us when we're pulling a job. Now, Pam, control yourself. Go ahead and put the swag on the table, Bert. We'll count it up later on. Yeah, sure. The reason I waited up for you is that we've got a visitor. But a visitor? Land's sakes, don't go roaring so loud. You wake him up. Who is he? Oh, just a boy. He's sleeping in the back room in Frank's bunk. My thunder, I've told you a hundred times I don't want no strangers poking their noses around here. But I couldn't turn him away, not in weather like this. I don't give a hang what kind of weather it is. He's not staying around here. But there's no place else he could go. That's his lookout. I'm going to boot him out of here right now. Oh, now, wait a minute, Paul. What's the matter with you? Don't you think it's kind of risky kicking him out this way? What are you talking about? Well, I, I mean, if we kick him out now, he's not going to forget about it. Like as not, he'll tell folks how us three came home in the middle of the night and turned him out in this blizzard. Well, what if he does? Suppose the kid blabs to someone. And then that someone hears how Sullivan's Roadhouse was robbed tonight by three men. They might figure out that we did it. Say, hey, I thunder I never thought of that. Grab up the lamp and we'll go back and see if he's sleeping. Yeah, good idea. Davy had been awakened by the sound of Ham's angry voice. And after hearing what Bert had said, he huddled terrified under the blankets. He decided to pretend that he was asleep. His dog, Skipper, who was stretched out on the floor beside the bunk, looked up with a growl as Ham and Bert appeared in the doorway. Uh, he's asleep, all right. Uh, dead to the world. Come on, go back out in the front room, figure out what to do. Uh, You're not going to turn him out, are you, Ham? No, I'm not going to turn him out. But we may have to get rid of him. You mean get rid of him? Yes, kill him, that's what I mean. Holy smoke, Pa, do you know what you're saying? Certainly I know what I'm saying. Whether we kick him out or not, he knows the three of us were gone somewhere for half the night. Like you say, it could be mighty unhealthy for us if that news ever got circulated around. Oh, Pa, you can do Shut it. Shut up and let me think. If you hadn't been such a fool, we wouldn't be in this mess. Oh, God, I don't like the idea of killing him. We can get away with all these robberies, but murder is something else. What are you talking about? You plugged a man at the roadhouse tonight. I just winged him. It wasn't murder. Besides, if we did kill him, what do we do with his body? Bury it somewhere. What do you suppose? Yeah. And what happens when he turns up missing? For all we know, a dozen different people saw him heading this way. The Mounties might be able to trace him right here to this cabin. Uh, reckon they might at that. Uh, I don't think the kid's likely to go shooting off his mouth. Not if we don't turn him out or do anything to make him suspicious. That's right, Ham. I'm not so sure about that. I say we better not do anything hasty. Let's sleep on it first. The kid will still be here tomorrow morning. Yeah, maybe you're right. I'll think it over. But if I still feel the same way in the morning, I'm going to do away with the kid, whether the rest of you like it or not. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston and Constable Ross had arrived at the branch trail where the three crooks had turned off in order to circle back to their cabin. Hulking! Oh, 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 oh. They turned off on this branch trail, Sergeant? I don't know, Alex. Might be worthwhile to follow it and see if King can pick up that scent. But this trail circles back to the south. It wouldn't make sense for them to head toward Dawson if they wanted to go in the opposite direction. They might have done it on purpose to mislead us. What's the matter with King? 
Looks like he's found something. Just a second, fella. I'll light a lantern. We'll go over and see what it is. A moment later, the sergeant and Constable Ross bent down to examine King's find. What? It's a lantern. Yes. From the depth of the snow under it, I'd say it was dropped here sometime tonight. Do you suppose it belonged to the hold-up men? It's possible. If they did use this branch trail, the lantern may have rolled off one of their sleds while they were making the turn. Oh, wait a minute. What's the matter? There's a name painted on the bottom of the lantern. Ham Wiley. You know who he is? I certainly do. Met him last summer. He and his sons were rafting logs downriver to Dawson before the freeze-up. How many sons does he have? Two. And they're both grown men. Holy mackerel, in that case... Yes, they could be the three men who held up the roadhouse. Where do they live? A cabin south of there. Come on, Alex. We'll go there and check up on them. Back at the cabin, the crooks had routed Davy out of bed so that Frank Wiley could occupy his own bunk. Mrs. Wiley fixed some blankets on the floor by the stove, and Davy stretched out willingly with Skipper at his side. He waited for over an hour until the sound of snoring from the back room told him that the family was asleep. Then he whispered to his dog. Gosh, Skip, we got to get out of here and report to the police. Those three men are crooks. I heard everything they said. We wait till morning, they may kill us. <laughs> quiet, Skip, quiet. Don't make any noise or they may wake up. <laughs> Getting up out of the blankets, Davy dressed himself as quietly as possible. And then he tiptoed toward the door. Come on, Skip. Some time later, Bert Wiley was awakened by the sound of the door swinging open and shut. Uh, blasted all the wind must have blown the door open. I better get up and fix it. Groping his way through the darkness, Bert went out to the front room and shut the door. As he did so, he was struck by a sudden suspicion. Looking around, he saw by the red glow of the stove that Davy's blankets were empty. Holy mackerel, the kid's gone. Hey, Paul, wake up! I'm gonna wake up for Pete's sake. What's the matter? It's a kid. He's gone. Uh, gone? Yeah, that's what I said. He's run out on us. He must have heard us talking about killing him. Holy smoke. If he spreads that story around, our goose is cooked. I told you we should have killed him. Hell, there's no use griping about it now. We gotta go after him and stop yeah, him. Yeah, you're right. The snow is let up. We ought to be able to track him easy Good enough. Good enough. You wake up, Frank, and we'll get started. Right. Frank, come on, wake up. Frank. After hitching up their teams, the three crooks started out in pursuit of Davy. The snow had stopped falling, and the glow of the full moon, combined with the flashing northern lights, made it easy to follow his footprints. Instinctively, the boy had headed back toward Dawson, the headquarters of the mounted police. For nearly an hour, the crooks followed his tracks, and at last they caught sight of their quarry in the distance. There he is, up ahead. Yeah, and he's seen us, too. He's going to climb up the hillside. Mush, you huskies! Mush, mush! Mush! A few minutes later, the crooks reached the spot where Davy and his dog had started scrambling up the rocky hillside. Oh, oh, oh. All right, kid. Better come down here if you know what's good for you. I won't do it. In that case, we'll come up and get you. Come on. As the three men began climbing up the hillside, Davy managed to dislodge a rock and send it rolling down toward them. Watch out for that rock. Oh. So he wants to play rough, does he? I'll fix that brat right now with a bullet. Hey, what's that? Look, someone's coming around the bend. Can't plug the kid now, Bert. Shot will give us away. We gotta take care of him somehow. Looks like we're in trouble no matter what we do. Get your gun out, Frank. You and me will keep our sights trained down there in the trail so we can spray lead the minute someone comes in sight. In the meantime, maybe Bert can scare the kid into keeping quiet. All right, get your gun and be ready, Frank. Right. As Frank and Ham drew their guns, Davy realized that whoever was coming would be heading straight into an ambush. The crooks had turned momentarily and were looking down toward the bend in the trail. Davy acted fast. With a whispered command, he sent Skip charging down toward them. Then he yelled out a shout of warning. Look out! You're heading into danger! Oh, oh, you oh, oh, dog! Oh, oh, oh. Bert shot oh, went oh, wild oh, in the air oh, as he toppled backward oh, under oh, Skip's oh, attack. Oh, At that oh, moment, oh, while the crooks were still in confusion, oh, Sergeant Preston and Constable Ross oh, came around the bend with guns at the ready. Oh, 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 Holy mackerel, Father Mollies! Got him down, Frank! Oh, you don't... Oh, oh. The two Mounties had shot oh, first, and the two crooks tumbled face oh, downward on the slope. Help me, kid! For Pete's sake, all of your dog. Keep at him, Skip. Don't let him up until Sergeant Preston gets here. All right, Davy, I have him covered. Oh. Down, Skip. Down, boy. Oh. These two we shot are both unconscious, Sergeant. Well, attend to them later, Alex. Oh. All right, mister, on your feet. Uh. Now turn around and hold out your hands. Yeah. Handcuff him, Alex. Right, Sergeant. Who are these fellows? 
Are they the ones we were looking for? Yes, Alex. This man's Bert Wiley. The other two are his father and his brother. Gosh, Sergeant. You arrived just in time. They were going to kill me. Your shout of warning saved our lives, Davy. How'd you get mixed up with these men? Well, I... I stopped off at their cabin tonight on account of the blizzard. Mrs. Wiley was there alone. She let me stay, but when these three men got back, her husband was real mad at her for letting me in. Oh? It seems he and his sons had just robbed a roadhouse or then something. Then you were right, Sergeant. Yes, go on, David. Well, Mr. Wiley wanted to kill me for fear I might give him away, but finally they decided to wait till morning. They thought I was asleep, Sergeant, but I heard everything they said. So I waited till he went to bed, and then I sneaked away from the cabin. I headed back to Dawson so I could get word to the police, but... They came after me, and, well, you know the rest. Well, Davy, you've had a bad time of it since you came to the Yukon, but now I think your luck's turned. What do you mean? There's a $5,000 reward posted for the capture of these crooks. I'm going to see that it's paid to you. 5000 Oh, golly, Sergeant. Oh, but, but, gee, you're the ones who captured them. We might both have been killed if you hadn't shouted that warning and the skipper hadn't taken care of Bert Wiley. Besides, the Northwest Mounted Police doesn't accept your awards, Davy, so the 5000 will be all yours. Oh, gee. With that money, I'll pay Mother's doctor bills and we'll be able to have a home of our own. Oh, gosh, Sergeant, I can hardly wait to see her and tell her the news. Well, I imagine she'll be mighty happy just seeing you again, Davy. By that time, these three will be behind bars where they belong, and this case will be closed. In our next adventure, it was early in the morning when Ace Martin, owner of the cafe, rushed into Sergeant Preston's cabin. Sergeant! Sergeant Preston! What's wrong, Martin? It's my partner. He's been murdered. His furniture's wrecked. Dishes are smashed. Lamps are busted. And blood all over his cabin. All right, King. Let's go, boy. <laughs> Sergeant Preston doesn't realize that he is to oppose a crook of exceptional cunning. One who lies in wait with a loaded gun to kill anyone who successfully follows his trail. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure next Saturday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm.